How are we all doing? You all right? Still awake? Good. If you're feeling tired, you're obviously in a new mattress. Um, <laughs> I, 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 had to, I had to have this, do this session, and I'll explain why. Five years ago, when I left ASDA, I was the non-food director, and I was out in the marketplace looking for a new challenge. And somebody, I think actually younger than I was, said to me, I'm sorry, Mike, you're just an old school retailer. We're looking for a digital leader for this business, right? So when Martin asked me to do this, I thought, I've got to go and do that, yeah? <laughs> Just look at me now, I'm presenting at Practicology with all these digital people in the audience. So, look, I'm gonna move on. I've got about 20 odd minutes to talk you through. I've got loads of slides and talk you through how we actually have used digital um, to really change this business around. I'm checking the audience, who knows dreams? Oh, who doesn't know dreams then? Oh, crikey, that makes it a lot easier. Oh, somebody down there, I'll do my best. Okay, moving on. So, dreams, I'll quickly flick through. In 2013, three years ago, um, after four years of a pretty dismal time, the business went bust. And this is how dismal it was. Four years of declining like for likes. That's not how the market was performing. The business was way behind the market. They'd really lost it on all fronts. And profitability certainly had followed that way. Hence the reason it went bust uh, in 2013. I joined the business in August 13, almost three years ago, how time flies when you're having fun. Um, and the Times, who actually got it totally wrong on Sunday morning, when I woke up and saw on Sunday morning we were for sale for 400 million pounds, they also got it wrong on the day that I joined the business, that I wouldn't be sleeping anytime soon, because I've actually slept pre I've actually slept better since I've joined Dreams, I have to say. <laughs> um, I, 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 I have. Um, and Retail Week, I was with Retail Week last week, and I had to put this little thing in. So, what do you mean interesting? I thought that was rather rude, to be honest with you, on my first day. But it was tough. And I think any of you that go into a new business and have been a business as daunting as that, what do you, what do, you do, right? And as my first day as I drove up and I saw a director's only car park sign as I drove up, I kind of knew the kind of business I was heading into. Oh my God, you know, this business is in, clearly had been in serious trouble. But I needed to go out and listen and understand and just see what was going on. And that's what I did. Day two, I could tell no one had been north of Watford for quite a long time. This business had been in disarray. So off I went to Scotland. I spent half my retail career in Scotland. And they tell me the truth. That's what they do. And I spend an hour in a store in Scotland. Eventually, a couple of cups of tea, they give me the truth. And that's what they did. And on my notepad, that day was, do what you say you're going to do. They were totally pissed off with management, no trust, no confidence with what was going on. And they were certainly not sure of the future, understandably. I then just got a little picture that was on my phone when I was preparing for this, and I thought I had to show you this just to try and give you a feeling of how bad this was. I was in, I was in Cardiff, I'll never forget it. Uh, I was on the, on the lower floor, and a salesperson, Linda, was telling me how wonderful she was. Um, she was a brilliant salesperson, etc. I went up the stairs to the clearance area and I spotted this, a two draw chest or one draw that I think it's got 49 pounds on it. So I shouted down the stairs to Linda and I said, Linda, I thought you told me you were a great salesperson. And she says, I am. I says, well, there's a two draw chest here, one draw. Why haven't you sold it? She says, Mike, it's been there for eight years. <laughs> so I, serious, serious. So I shout down the stairs, how on earth can you know it's been here for eight years? because I started eight years ago and it was there then, right? <laughs> so that's where the business is at. You don't do it alone, Motley Crew. I think I've aged a few years since then, but we needed to get a new team together. Everybody was new, other than our rock star CFO on the far right as you look at Kim with the long hair, everyone was new to the business. And actually, strategically, I'd love to say it was well thought through, it wasn't, it was just people I trusted and I knew had built businesses with in the past. But not, because they knew nothing about the bed industry, it has seriously helped me in terms of what we've done. So I had to get them now to understand and get out from the office to understand. And this is where I think the magic starts to begin of what we've done in the last three years. Now, I'm not sure if any of you work with Denison, um, but this was our first engagement survey, and I'll explain it if you don't use Denison. This is telling you that only half of our employees filled it in. That's not very engaged, yeah? And the more color in the center of it is the more you're engaged. And you won't be able to see the detail, but it's basically saying the strategic direction of the business, the goals of the business, they understand where we're going, they feel involved in the business, they feel engaged. As I presented this first set of slides, 
I said, when you're engaged, you've been out for a few drinks, you've maybe been to cinema, a couple of meals, maybe a bit more than a couple of meals, and you get engaged. We haven't met. This was telling me that our employees, we haven't met anyone yet. We don't know each other. So we knew, we knew we had problems, the business had gone bust, but we certainly did, I mean, engaged employees. In terms of our customer, this is what we set off to do. We introduced a process called Pillow Talk. Um, I'm a huge fan of a company called SMG. Um, they used to have video mystery shopping and video mystery shopping um, in the stores. They hated it, um, as I could clearly hear as I went round. Pillow Talk is our online survey. We've had 150,000 customers have communicated to me over the last three years with this. Actually, Pillow Talk now runs the company. So Pillow Talk tells me 6,000 customers a week tell me what they think of our business. The beauty of this for our team is I call it management by mirror. As soon as a customer gives you some feedback, it pops up in the store on the screen. And as a salesperson, they get the immediate feedback in front of the team, was it a good experience for the customer or not? We don't really have to manage people out of our business if they're poor salespeople. The customer does it for us through Pillow Talk. This has been an incredible tool for us. Um, and you'll see as I go through my presentation, everything's branded. I brand everything internally. And Pillow Talk was important to call it that. If you call it the um, customer online, you know, research feedback for over the heads. Pillow Talk we brought to life and we really engaged with our teams to do it. It told us what we knew. Standards were poor. Product quality was, we had a big issue on returns. Um, returns were over 13% at this stage on product. Highly recognized, but certainly not a recommended brand. We kind of knew that. So we needed to have a clear plan, and this is what I did on week six. For those of you, apologize, it's very basic, very simple. If you've worked at Asda, yes, I've stolen some of it from there. But, it, but, it, but that's, you know, but this, this is still alive today in our business. We haven't changed anything from week six, right? And trying to explain to you to try and as we got a conference together on week nine to say to people we're going to put a dreams bed in every home you can imagine with the lack of engagement what people thought in fact they laughed at that statement at me uh, on week nine the most important thing we've done is really uh, put some values into the business that we do put the customer first uh, do what we say we're going to do from linwood store on my second day that found it onto our values and really we wanted to build up trust and respect but the big thing has been this journey that we've been on in the last three years Clearly, we had to sort out the culture and really, really engage. Engagement wasn't there. And that's been a massive part of what we've had to do to become what we've tried to become, the most recommended bed company in the UK. You're allowed to say profitable, by the way. When the business goes bust, I've learned that. When I was at Asda, I couldn't stand up and say, I want to be the most profitable part. You couldn't say that. But when the business had gone into the position that dreams had gone, I've very much <coughs> been able to say, we want to make profit. We need to reinvest because if we don't make profit, we all actually know what happens. And that has really helped me too in the last three years, I have to say, trying to keep it real and keep costs real. So that was me week nine when they laughed at me. And I have the video still with them laughing in the audience when I put this slide up, a dream's better in every home. But that's when the last three years has been about. It's been about getting out, getting amongst it. Probably what our politicians need to do a little bit more is get out, you know, stand on the soapbox and just keep selling the message, come with me. Come and join me. I promise you, we're going to build this business. We're going to have a great time. Back to the floor. We do it twice a year for three days in a row. That's Linda, our HR director. Linda Mead, pocket rocket she is. She's amazing. That's in a customer's home. That's me in van 72. After us in van 72, it, it broke down. We had to fill it up with oil. I phoned up Kim, the CFO, and I said, Kim, we need new vans. And he said, Mike, these vans will last for another two years. I said, have you ever been out in a van? He says, no. I said, you've got to go out in the van. So we set him up the next week, given the toughest day that you could imagine. And he phoned me up and he said, Mike, we need new vans. Right. <laughs> and we ordered 100 new Mercedes vans within days, right? which you'll see a bit later on. But we have engaged. We have been out there. Richard Voice is our IT, uh, our digital guy in the room. He knows all about this. A little interesting one here. That's me down with green bags, um, holding green bags. This is just a very interesting thing if you're a retailer. So we used to send green bags, that for recycling mattresses, so customers don't like you know, to get rid of their mattress by leaving it outside their home or taking it down to the dump. They like us to come and take it. Brilliant. But they, we want it to be covered up and for our guys to be safe, don't we? Kind of a bit health and safety. We used to send it out in a little bag to the customer and send them away with it. But somebody came up with the idea, we can save 50 grand a year 
if we just send in a big roll and the stores can do it themselves and roll it out, right? 50 grand, we were looking for every penny we bloody had at the start. Great idea, let's go. Until you go and work and do it yourself and say, I've got to fold this bloody bag up, right? And then I've got to sell the customer a 5p bag to stick it in for them to leave the store because that's what legally you've got to do. You've got to sell them a bag. We now send them in. But going back to the floor has been really important. We communicate, communicate, communicate. We had a magazine that was quarterly externally. We brought it in-house. It's monthly between the sheets. And that is what we do. We just keep talking and talking and talking. A bit like me now. Make and buy great products was a very important of our next journey. Our products were coming, I call them boomerang beds. They were coming back faster than we were selling them. You may not know this, but 65% of what dreams sell, we make. I didn't actually realize that out of factory the day I took over the job of the business, so I, I didn't know that. I'll tell it, don't tell anyone that, all right? But I didn't. See, when I found the factory, I was like, whoa, this is amazing. It was losing a fortune, the factory at the time, but I still thought I can do something with this, all right? And boy, oh boy, have we. That's what the products used to look like. All right, that was another iPhone picture. This is what we've been up to. We've launched our own brands. Therapure is now 20% of our business. That's a little village where I used to live in Harrogate called Flaxby. We decided to call it that because I thought it sounded quite nice. That bed is actually made um, up in Yorkshire. It's got cashmere, silk, you know, it's got beautiful um, inside it, natural product. Called it Flaxby, great part of our business now. Um, New copper products are really investing in the product. Every product that Dreamers have been replaced. Every product from that first day has changed. The Atherton, my daughter sleeps on that. Good product and it's not coming back, right? You'll see in the numbers a little bit later on, the returns rates are down. So inspire more customers, what does that mean? Well, as you try and work a strategy through in a business and you try and put a simple plan and I think there needs to be a simple plan that every employee understands in my view. That was the brand. And shame on you, Practicology is an old brand logo. I'll get you for that one, right? But we decided we need to move on, and partly because of Google. Because a lot of people search for sleep. They don't really go online and search for cheap beds. They go online, and lots of people are talking about sleep on Facebook and Twitter. So we decided we'd go down the direction of sleep rather than talking about we're the number one bed company. And that's what we changed it to. I have to thank my wife for the branding, the reversal of the colors, because that's what she told me to do. She wanted to use, what's that, um, Faro and Ball stuff. We didn't go there. But we reversed it to that, and we came up with a line, because your sleep matters. That's been important for us. And that has really, I think, moved the business in quite a way. Has anyone seen our Replace Every Eight advert? Yes. Good. Um, we've just launched our new one. So I think I'm going to show you that next, I think. And think of you If you lost, you can look And you will find me Time after time Your mattress goes through a lot For a better night's sleep We recommend you replace it every eight years To help you remember Dreams mattresses come with a delivered on date Replace every eight at Dreams Because your sleep matters so that launched last Wednesday. We had our best week for, we were 32% growth last week, 46% growth on two years last week. Um, brilliant. And if I offer you any value today, I'd like you to go, as you go, would you download the single? We are currently at 48th in the charts. We want to get top 40. Uh, we're ahead of, we are ahead of Cindy Lauper with that track. One, um, um, so time after time, dreams, if you go on, it's everywhere. Spotify, iTunes, we don't care. Please, if you could download it. So improving, improving our brand has been absolutely massive, right? We launched something we didn't even tell our employees this. We launched our Sleep Matters website because we wanted to become more, more knowledgeable, share with customers about sleep. Anyone searching about sleep, we'd hope they'd find dreams, and that's what we built on the Sleep Matters Club. We have now told our teams what we're doing, um, but it's a really um, lot of information there. In the last month, we've, uh, we've launched our Sleep Matters app, so if you're not sleeping well, it can give you a score on why you're not sleeping and you know, join it up with what you're eating and you know, what you're consuming. We just want to get in the space of sleep all right, and move the brand on. And we've certainly done that. Once you've done that, you've got some engagement. And boy, oh boy, have we got some engagement, which I'll show you in the numbers later on. You then focus on the shops. That's my first week outside Tottenham Court Road. That's what it looks like. Well, it's moved on a little bit more since then. 
But that sales of that store was 60% growth just with a new sign and a lick of paint. 60% in a 3 million turnover store. That's what our store's looking like internally. You won't have shopped in any of them. I'm sure you won't have seen any of our stores previously, um, but they didn't look like that, trust me. Uh, and we've used another concept, Comfort by Color, in stores to break up the amount of mattresses to add some color rather than just lots of white in the store. And that's the new vans. That's the 100 new Mercedes vans, just proof that we have ordered them and replaced them. And the fuel efficiency alone and, the, the, um, and not fixing them as often is, is paid back already. Um, and then some new signage. So the journey so far, lots of stuff done, but what about has it made any bloody difference? Um, it's got to be profitable, and we've been allowed to say that. First of all, though, how have we got on with engagement? So our donut of doom, as we called it on the first year, circle of opportunity if you're on a good day. Um, we moved to 90% of our employees in year after the first year and filled it in. Brilliant. Normally, Dennis and see in high-performing companies, you see a 10% increase year on year. We saw a 52% increase in our, in our in scores. So all of those miles, all of those road shows, and just so you know, I meet every employee face-to-face -face twice a year, every employee. Not every manager, every employee face-to-face. -face. And I'll just explain why I do that. After the second conference, we left every manager with a basket of sweets, huge basket of sweets. And we said, take it back to the team and say thank you for, we've had an amazing year. There's a card, Christmas card signed in from the management team, give it to the team. So the following week, I'm out and about in stores, as I am, quite often, and I was saying to the team, how about the sweets? How do the sweets go? The sweets? The sweets? So I don't want to embarrass anyone particularly, so, okay, oh, never mind, I must have got made a mistake. A couple more stores. How'd you get on with the sweets? The sweets? I was thinking, Oh my God, we've given them this huge basket of sweets. Why have they not gone to the store? But my bigger concern as I calmed down a little bit, <laughs> as I drove around, I thought if the sweets haven't gone back, have any of the messages gone back that I've spent two days going on and on and on about, right? So I got back and I said to the retail director, and this is the last week in November, I want to meet every employee before Christmas. Sorry? I said, I want to meet every single person, everyone. I don't care how many meetings. I don't care how many venues. I'll travel as far as it, I need to go. I can't go to 171 shops, but can you bring it down a little bit? I want to meet everybody. We grew sales by 43% in January in our biggest month. And I believe we did that because we engaged and we spoke to every individual. From that point on, we now meet them twice a year face to face and tell them the truth about what's going well and what's going badly, and that's been vital. The third year has just come out last week, 93% in, in participation, and that takes us into the top 25% companies in the world in terms of Dennis engagement from a company that three, less than three years ago, well, you can see the donut of doom. So that's moved on. Our returns rate, our products are not coming back, right? Now, when I this is, a, this is everything that we return in our business. We do a 40-night guarantee. If you don't like it, you can bring it back. You know, we'll come and pick it up after 40 nights if it's not comfortable. So that inc includes everything that comes back to us. Yeah, and it was at 13% as I joined um, early part of 13. Um, come down a lot. That saved us millions of pounds. Pillow talk. Change the business. This is now telling me, by the way, what does 85% mean? It takes about 13 minutes to complete the survey. If a customer doesn't score as five out of five on all of the metrics, they don't, they don't sit in 85%. So if you score me four out of five on one of the metrics, one of the questions, you're in the 15%. This is top, top. This is world class in terms of SMG. They do 100 million surveys a year, um, massive in America, um, bigger now and getting bigger in the UK, but that is top class. We've just launched a process called GDP in the business off the back of this tool, because the data that this gives us is just immense. People don't just fill in a survey, they give us a whole paragraph of what they thought about their experience. Good, and obviously they give us some insights where it's not so good. We launched GDP off the back of 150,000 feedback. What does that mean for us? A greet, a drink, and a pillow. We know in our business, if we greet people correctly, there's a way of greeting people badly, um, offer them a drink that's a decent drink, and offer them a pillow as they're making the purchase, we know we can delight them, and we know they spend more with us. We didn't know that before Pillow Talk. That's factual data from the 150,000 customers. It's been brilliant. 
How's our sales going? We clearly had gone backwards in 13, understandably it was disrupted, it, it gone bust. And um, we got 8% growth in the first year, we got 19% like for like last year, and we're currently running at 24, 25% this year. So I kind of 50 odd percent growth of sales, no new stores in that number um, since three years. Making money, um, which we're allowed to do, and we've got to do to buy all the new vans and buy, you know, do all the new stuff. And we lost four million pounds in, in that first year as I arrived. Um, understandable, as I said, we, we moved that by 10 million year on year in year one. We trebled that last year and our last 12 months is currently 35.5. I certainly believe we can hit 40 million. Um, Brexit might not help, so that just did work, but you know, we'll see. We're on a run rate to exceed 40 million pounds this year, which will be the, not the most profitable bed company in the UK, the most profitable bed company in the world at 13.3% of turnover. Um, within that turnover, we've grown turnover by about 100 million from the same stores, 170 stores over three years. So what's been key, and I, I hope it's been clear to you as I've gone through, I know I'm trying to go fast, but we have listened to our team, I've listened to our team as much, possibly even more than I've listened to customers, because I am of that view that it doesn't matter how great your product it doesn't matter how brilliant your service is going to be. If your colleagues don't re aren't with you and don't respond to that new product or respond to that new ad, you're just not there. And I'll give you one little factor. of I came back from holiday last year when the RE8, our Replace Every 8 campaign was launched. And as I got back to my desk, there's 160 videos I'd been sent from our employees who'd made their own Replace Every 8 advert because we'd offered a little competition to win a, you know, something to give us your own advert. That's engagement, and that's what they did. That one plan, that one journey, you know, it was simplistic. It is simplistic, but it's on every wall, in every meeting, and everywhere you go, every employee's got the card. Everyone knows the card, and the more senior people have got the three-year plan on the back of the card of that one page. Communication, communication, communication. Um, and I, as you gather, I'm very shy and I don't like communicating very often. <laughs> but, you know, we have gone full out on that and we are on the road all the time. In fact, um, we're going through, although we meet every employee twice a year, we meet the managers four times a year, which is this week as well. So I'm, I'm doing that this week. Um, and that customer journey was vital. And as I said, a little bit of luck. The, that conversation with our friends at Google just, just tune me in, so don't run away and fix the shops. Get the brand right. The traffic to the web has gone off the scale. So our web sales were 7%. They are now 13, Richard, I'm 13% of our turnover. But keep in mind, our turnover has gone up 50% in total. So our web business is just a different world. And if you'd asked me on day one, would we be able to sell beds online, I would have probably said, what? A bed online? Jeez, that's a, that's a tough sale. We are certainly doing it with a great team there. So understanding that journey um, and just, just constantly, constantly reviewing it. I am a royal pain in the arse on a Monday reviewing the data, as Richard will know on that third row. And we go through the pillow talk data. We go through you know, all of our um, hosts of data but it's working and it's moving. So thanks very much, it's lovely to talk to you. Thank you.